Mobile World Congress 2020 is dead. The annual mobile show, which usually runs in late February or early March, was cancelled this year due to fears about the Wuhan coronavirus. After countless companies pulled out, the GSMA was, for the first time ever, forced to abandon the show. That means a dozen or so major announcements we were expecting to see in Barcelona now won't be happening. Almost all of them have been postponed by several weeks, meaning we'll now see a trickle of phone launches likely later in March, as opposed to several all at once at the end of February. So let's take a look at what won't be launching in Barcelona later this month. These are the victims of MWC 2020. LG had been due to launch its latest flagship phone, the V60 ThinQ, at MWC. This new phone is a successor to last year's V50, sporting 5G connectivity and a gigantic 5,000 mAh battery. A detachable second screen is also rumoured, as we saw with the V50 and G8X, a feature which sounds and looks a little bit weird, but actually works pretty well once you get used to it. Other major specs include a quad camera array, though no specifics on the combination of lenses there, plus a 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC plugged into that most increasingly rare of things, a 3.5mm headphone jack. And as leaked in this promotional image by Evan Blass, the presence of four-channel microphones in this device suggests LG will continue with the V-series focus on content creators. No firm launch date yet for the V60, but I suspected with the last-minute cancellation of MWC, we won't have to wait too much longer. After debuting the new foldable Razer to reviews that can generously be described as a bit of a mixed bag, Motorola was set to launch its new Edge handsets in Barcelona before MWC's cancellation. It's the first proper high-spec Motorola flagship in years, and according to the leaks it's built around a waterfall display with a super curved edge. Shots leaked by XDA developers don't give too much away outside of the aforementioned Kirby screen and a hole-punch camera, but the publication has also scooped some other details including a 90Hz refresh rate, Full HD Plus resolution and built-in 5G connectivity. Other leaks point to a vanilla Motorola Edge featuring a Snapdragon 765 chip, with a larger Edge Plus opting for a more powerful and expensive Snapdragon 865. And the Plus in particular should offer some really nice battery life with a 5169mAh cell. The Motorola Edge Plus will reportedly be exclusive to Verizon in the US, with the unlocked version instead carrying the name Motorola One 2020. Nokia and HMD Global were set to show off new 5G phones in Barcelona, but details so far have remained sketchy. The successor to last year's Nokia 9 PureView looks set to be pushed back to later in 2020, so it can use a Snapdragon 865 processor. In the meantime, we'd likely see something in the mid-tier 5G space, perhaps using a Snapdragon 765 instead. Other Nokia possibilities include the refreshed budget-flavoured Nokia 5.2, but we'll just have to wait and see what's next from HMD. No replacement launch event has been announced just yet. Sony, purveyor of increasingly lanky smartphones, may have cancelled its February 24th press conference, but the launch of its new Xperia devices will go ahead as planned via video stream. The Xperia 5 Plus takes the device we saw late last summer and upscales it, while also upgrading the camera to a triple lens setup with a time-of-flight camera for better portraits. And based on leaked renders and info from the reliable OnLeaks, we're looking at a 21x9 panel measuring 6.6 .6 inches diagonally. And aesthetically, if you've used any of Sony's recent phones, you should know what to expect here. These are big, tall handsets, though they do buck some of the current trends by lacking display cutouts and leaving the good old 3.5mm headphone jack intact. So we'll know more about Sony's latest in just a few days. The Mi 10 series has already broken cover in China, where it launched very recently, but Xiaomi was due to hold its global launch event for these phones at NWC once again on February 24th. There's no new launch date just yet, but with the help of a little translation, we can peek behind the curtain and see what the Mi 10 and Mi 10 Pro will look like in China. Both phones are powered by a Snapdragon 865 processor and feature 90Hz displays with 120Hz touch sampling. Both feature curved screens and hole-punch cameras, and the Mi 10 Pro in particular has a really impressive quad camera setup with 108MP primary, 12MP short telephoto, 8MP long telephoto, and a 20MP ultrawide. That's a pretty exhaustive loadout. Prices for the Mi 10 Pro start at the equivalent of just 716 US dollars in China, but expect this phone to become a little bit pricier once it starts shipping globally. The Huawei P40 isn't due to arrive for another month or so according to the latest leaks, so instead the Android highlight for the Chinese firm looks set to be the Mate XS, its second generation foldable phone. CEO Richard Yu has already confirmed that an updated Mate X variant with the new Kirin 990 chipset will be on the way in the near future. That's the same processor powering the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. What's more, the updated Mate will reportedly feature design and camera improvements over the existing model, as well as a slightly smaller form factor and improved screen-to-body ratio. 
That's all well and good, but the question remains whether, with Huawei's current geopolitical difficulties, the new foldable will even be able to launch outside of mainland China. We'll find out on February 23rd. OPPO is due to unveil the Find X2 in Barcelona on February 22nd, but that's been postponed to an unannounced date. The successor to the Find X, OPPO's motorized camera dealie from 2019, is set to use a Snapdragon 865 processor and feature a Galaxy S20 matching 120Hz QHD Plus OLED display. It's also rumored to use the new 48 megapixel Sony IMX689 sensor, which features omnidirectional phase detection autofocus for faster focusing. Plus, naturally, there's 65 watt supercharging, just like the Reno Ace device that launched in October last year. But with a phone like this, what everyone wants to know is how will it look, and whether the weird mechanical selfie camera from the original Find X will return. We should find out for sure sometime in March. ZTE was one of the first companies to pull out of MWC, and it's unclear exactly how much stuff the Chinese firm would have been bringing to Barcelona. However, it's likely we'd learn more about its global launch plans for the last conventional flagship on this list, the ZTE Axon 10s Pro. It's a pretty typical 2020 flagship with Snapdragon 865 processor, triple cameras, a dewdrop notch display, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 of storage, and onboard 5G. It was also set to be our first look at the bizarrely named Mi Favor UI, based on Android 10. ZTE's software hasn't strayed too far from the typical Android look and feel thus far, and despite this weird brand naming, the new software should include some pretty interesting features like full voice controls. And finally, a very late-breaking addition to this list, TCL was set to bring the first slide-out foldable phone to NWC before the show was scuttled. However, images have since leaked to CNET, giving us an early look at how the phone will function. Folded in, it basically looks like any other modern Android phone with a curved screen, but extended out, and the foldable segment forms a miniature tablet, doing so in a way that's not really like anything we've seen before. It's a fascinating design that demonstrates the potential for foldables goes far beyond the current fold and flip devices. No word on specs, price, or availability, but the leaked images do show a quad rear camera setup and dual hole punch selfie shooters. That's it for now, neither Android Central nor indeed anyone else will be at MWC this year, but we'll still be covering all the stuff on this list both on the site and here on the channel. Subscribe so you don't miss that. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.